God. Hallelujah. Well, I'm excited tonight, amen, for what God is up to. We, we've had a transplant from Oklahoma. How many of y'all know I'm partial to Oklahoma? Amen. And Lord uh, finished an assignment on Pastor Terry Tatum. His wife, his daughter finished their assignment in Oklahoma, said it's time to go. Amen. And, and of all the places that God said go, he said go to Mississippi. I mean, don't we have a lot of those stories, amen, in this church? Hallelujah. Amen. Come to Mississippi. And we've made a connection that wasn't just a connection, but it was a divine connection. And uh, it's like they've been here forever. And uh, we're excited tonight to have Pastor Terry come. Uh, you know how I do things. We were riding to uh, McGee, Mississippi yesterday. And I said, has God given you a word for destiny yet? He said, matter of fact, I said, that's good, because you're up tomorrow. That's how we roll at destiny, amen. We give you plenty of time to get it all together, hallelujah. Amen, hallelujah. We're excited about Craig. Craig's going to be delivering Saturday night at Mercy House. Hallelujah. We have some preachers in this house because I am free. I'm not threatened by anybody because I know that as long as I'm under God's hand, I'm the man for my position. And so now my job is, is to raise up people to do what God's called them to do. And that's what we're doing. We got some preaching machines in this place. Amen. We got an encounter coming up. August. Praise the Lord. We released some preachers all during that right there. Amen. So it's going to be good. But I'm excited tonight. Pastor Terry, come. Amen. And we're going to just loose you. Amen. Yeah, stand, honor the man of God. Praise God. Well, not only did the Lord say go to Mississippi, he said go to Destiny Church. Yeah. And before we even sold our house, we were looking, and uh, at, then right after we sold our house, we knew we were moving to Gulfport, and so I was searching on the internet, and anyway, I felt such a drawing. There was no other church on the Gulf Coast but this one, Amen. and I feel, Amen. and there's a drawing of the Holy Spirit here, Amen. just in case you don't realize that, there is such a drawing of His presence. It is an honor to stand here this evening and share with you the Word of God. I haven't preached in a while. <clears throat> so uh, anyway, <laughs> keep that in mind. <laughs> anyway, t tonight I want to share with you from one of my favorite Psalms, Psalms 107. And before I get there, I just want to give you a little background of my thought. And it is the Lord has put on my heart through, uh, well, over the last week especially, but that there, is, there are a lot of Christians that are on a spiritual roller coaster ride. Yes. They're up and down, up and down, up one week and down the next. That is an attack of Satan. And what happens in that is you become discouraged, and then, what, and then the next thing that happens is your expectation starts falling. And you begin, to you begin to think, well, this is, this is the way it's going to be. And you know what? God says, no, that's not what it's, it's not going to remain that way. If you're unhappy where you are spiritually, you're getting ready to go to a new level. Anybody ready for that? But how many know there is no defeat in Jesus? Hallelujah. Tonight I want to talk to you about five things, or I, I love it to call it five roads that lead to victory. 
five rows. So this psalm is about uh, thanking God for his goodness, thanking God for, for his uh, deliverance. And I believe that this psalm covers past, present, and future. How many are glad that you can thank God for the past and you can thank God for right now, but you can by faith thank him for what he's going to do in the future. I don't know about you, but I'm thanking God for what he's already done, and I'm thanking God right now, but I am really thanking him for what he's about to do in my life. Are you about to, are you, amen, are you about ready for that? Are you ready for, to go to a new level and say, God, I thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do, amen? And that is an awesome thing. This psalm begins with, uh, it is actually a continuation from Psalms 105 and 106, and it uh, encourages us and reminds us that God's mercy, His mercy endures forever. How many are glad His mercy endures forever? forever. All right, let's look at verse number one. Again, five roads that lead to victory. Uh, number one, uh, Psalms 107 and verse 1 says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His mercy endures forever. How many are glad that His mercy endures forever? Every morning. His mercy is new every morning. You see, this is a, David knew what it was to have disappointments. He knew what it was to go through in dark places, in the valleys. He knew what it was to be betrayed. He knew what it was to go from disappointment, from disappointment to disappointment. He knew, that, he knew what that was like. And so in this psalm, he tells us about victory, about getting the victory. And number one is give thanks. How many know giving thanks is powerful? In other words, I believe that giving thanks is a seed for more. You believe that? I think giving thanks is a seed for more. If you want more, give thanks to God. Hallelujah. And the word thanks there in verse 1, it comes from a Hebrew word, and it means to be, obviously, to praise, to make confession, to give thanks, to be thankful, or thanksgiving. Nothing speaks more powerfully of a walk with God than continual thanksgiving. Did you hear me okay? Let me say that again. Nothing speaks more pow powerfully of a walk with God than continual thanksgiving. Thankful, thankfulness should characterize our lives. Did you know what? Did you know unthankfulness in uh, being ungrateful leads to a spirit, usually leads to a spirit of entitlement? And that's what we have in America. People are ungrateful. We, it's widespread, and it's even in some churches, we, they're, they're to the point where, you know, a spirit of, a spirit of entitlement is like, you, it's owed me. I deserve it. I want it. It's mine. But you know what? God doesn't owe us a thing. He loves us so much. He loves you so much that he is going to bless you, pour out, your spirit, pour out his spirit upon you, and, and bless you, and give you favor, and all those things. Friend, it, we haven't earned it and we'll never earn it. It is because of the cross of Calvary's Hill that you and I are where we are. And how many are glad at the foot of the cross is level ground? It is level ground. You have the same opportunity as I have to go deeper in the Lord. How many are ready to do that? Thank you, Lord. And if, if something is owed us, then we do become, if that's our mindset, we do become ungrateful. Billy Graham said this, a spirit of thankfulness is one of the most distinctive marks of a Christian whose heart is attuned to God. How many are glad that you're, you're in tune to God? All right. Number one, give thanks. Number two, and now that is number one, road to victory. Number two, the second way, the second road to victory is verse two, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. How many know what comes out of our mouth yes. means a lot? Yes. What we speak for. Don't tell me you're believing God for something. Don't tell me that you're, you're praying for a miracle and then you're talking negative about it. Oh, tell, tell, when you tell me that you're believing for something great, you're believing for a miracle, be around people that believe in miracles. Oh, 
if you believe in great things, uh, how many know that when you believe in something great, be around somebody that was in agreement with you? Because we can say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You know, there's, a, there's an attack in that way. God, wa- uh, God wants us to proclaim and say who He is and who we are in Him. How many are glad for who you are in Him and who He is in you? Yes. Hallelujah. Did you know the Word of God becomes part of you before you become part of it? Amen. What did you think on that one? How many want the Word of God to become part of you in such a way? Well, you got to get in there and, be, and let it become part of you. Get it in here. Amen? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Uh, verse 2, the word redeem, uh, or excuse me, the word say in verse 2, it comes from a Hebrew word and it literally means to publish or to say in one's heart. In other words, you see yourself there and you're proclaiming it. You, it's a profession. It's a, amen? How many, how many profess God's doing great things? How many declare God's doing great things? Hallelujah. So what comes out of our mouth means a lot. In fact, Proverbs 18 and 21 says, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will find or will eat its fruit. And there is power in what we speak. You know, we can speak, we may not feel uh, like we're all that. We may not feel like we're on the, uh, where we want to be or what God, we know God's doing great things. And by the way, there's a refreshing of his presence in here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. No wonder Brother Chris goes, (laughs) (laughs) hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. How many remember the, the scripture in Matthew? I'm, I'm going to share with you Matthew 16, verse 13. Very familiar scripture. It says, when Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked the disciples, saying, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Remember that one? Yeah. Verse 14. So they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, others Jeremiah, one of the prophets. But he said unto them, who do you say that I am? Who do you say? Let's make it personal. Let's make it personal. Let's make it personal to you. Let's make it real to you. Who do you say I am? Who do you say? And then listen to what Simon Peter said. Verse 16, Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. How many know that's profession? That's declaration? That's saying so. That's, letting, that's the redeemed saying so. And look, look at this. Verse, verse 17, Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed it to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And verse 18, And I also say to you, you are Peter. Peter's name means rock. Then he says, And on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. What was Jesus telling Peter? He was telling Peter, upon your confession of who I am, I am going to build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I'm going to go one step further. In the Greek, it literally means, when he says that, when Peter says that to the Lord, it literally means a confession that will not be moved. So how many know, how, how many know that when Peter said that, and he says, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, he's saying on your firm confession of who I am, I'm going to build on it, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Confession will not prevail. That confession. Peter, I'm going to build on what you say. I'm going to build on what comes out of your mouth right now. Oh, glory be to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. And then, I love that part. All right, look at Psalms 107, verse 3. And gathered out of the lands from the east and from the west and from the north and the south. How many know the Lord's drawing people from all over to the Gulf Coast, to right here? 
They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. And that means, verse 4, is they found no place that they could rest, no peace, no, no place to, to call their own. But listen to what it says. The next thing that leads to victory, and I love this one. Number three, hungry and thirsty. Is anybody hungry and thirsty in this house? Are you hungry for God? Are you ready to go to a new level? Of, are you hungry for more? You see, when you're hungry, you'll do what it takes to get where God wants you to go. When you're hungry, you'll do more. When you're hungry, you'll put forth an effort. When you're hungry, how many know hunger and thirst adds to your expectation? Did you know what? When you come in the house and you have expectation, you're hungry. You're hungry, aren't you? And how many know the atmosphere of expectancy is a breeding ground for a miracle? Hallelujah. The atmosphere of expectancy is a breeding ground for a miracle. How many know that when you come in the house of the Lord and you have expectancy, anything can happen? Anything can happen. Hallelujah. And I, that's exciting. Anything can happen when we have expectancy. I, don't, I preach in places where, uh, where a miracle could happen at any time. And I preach in places where it'd be a miracle if anything did happen. <laughs> I, I'm just telling you. I just, just being honest, okay? <laughs> Hungry and thirsty. They're, they're so that's not here. Hallelujah. Hunger there, uh, it means figuratively to crave. How many crave for God? You want, you're, you're you just want more. You're hungry and you're craving for God. It also means, it also comes from a part of the meaning of that. It means absolutely starving. How many are starving for more of God? Amen? Well, recently I was reading Leonard Ravenhill's book. It's an old book. It's, have you read it? Leonard Ravenhill's book. And like I said, it's, it's been around a long time. This is about my third time to read it. It's called Revival Praying. And it focuses on revival, that, revival praying. And when we're hunger. And did you know that Leonard Ravenhill had a lot of people he influenced along the way? He had a lot of people. And you know what? When people see our hunger and our expectation, we'll influence them as well. We will. We'll influence them. We'll let, they know that our God is a big God. They know that our God is important to us. They know that. They know. They know because we get up on Sunday morning and go to church, that we're here on Wednesday night, we're, we're here on Monday night. They know. Our neighbors know that. Our family knows that, that we're hungry for God. That it, and how many know that will, that will make an influence on them? I was reading. Not only did I, am I reading that book, but I was reading about the people that uh, that Leonard Ravenhill influenced, and one of them was Steve Hill. He was Steve Hill's pastor. And how many know Steve Hill was the evangelist at the Brownsville Revival? And Steve Hill was all, also at the revival in Argentina. And not only did he, uh, not only did he influence him, but he influenced uh, Michael Brown, who was on staff at Brownsville Revival. And not only did he influence him, Tommy Tenney, who wrote the God Chasers. Anybody chase God? Anybody chasing God? And then he followed that up by the God chase, uh, Catchers. Hallelujah. And he also influenced Keith Green, the singer Keith Green, and then David Wilkerson. And there's a few more. A.W. Towser was a good friend. How many know we can influence people when we live for God and when we hunger, when we hunger? Hallelujah. Psalms 107 verse 6 says, They cried unto the Lord, they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and He delivered them out of their distresses. How many are glad God delivers us out of our distresses? Amen. You know what? I don't believe it's God's will for us to live in defeat. I don't believe it's God's will for us to be on a roller coaster ride where we're up and down and discouraged one day and up the next. Amen. God wants us to live in victory. He wants us to walk above and not beneath. 
Verse 6, four times the psalmist uses this, this verse. Four times he states, deliver them out of their distresses. Four times. Look at verse 7. And he led them forth by the right way, and that they might go into a city for a dwelling place. They're finally going to get to rest. They're finally going to have peace. They're finally going to get where God wants them. Hallelujah. You know what? You may not be where you want to be, but you're not where you used to be. And you're, you're headed somewhere in Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, number four. I'm going fast. Number four. Oh, that man would give thanks to the Lord. That it, thanks there is interchangeable with praise. So, oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness. Because you know what? Praise, and that is a, that's one of those roads, roads to victory. Praise will get God, will bring God right where you are. It'll bring God to your situation. It'll bring God right where you are. Because you know what? There's an anointing that comes upon you and it comes upon us. Not just because you get up Sunday morning and go to church and you put on your favorite shirt or you put on your favorite outfit. There's an anointing that comes upon us because we know what it is to go through the valley. Because we know what it is to, to be in a dark place. And, and we keep on trusting the Lord. And we keep on praising the Lord anyway. And when you go through that dark place and you praise God anyway, and you're hungry anyway, and you, and you thank God anyway, and people say, why, why would you thank God in a bad place? Because I know He's going to bring me out of it. I know He's going to bring me out of it. He's going to make a way. He's going to make a way. And how many know he always makes a way? Glory be to Jesus. Oh, that men would praise the Lord. Praising God really comes down to is your revelation who God is. People that have a hard time praising, okay, I won't go there. They need a better revelation. Because he is worthy of praise. He is worthy of our praise. Amen. Hallelujah. And then it goes on, verse 8. Uh, and his wonderful works for, to the children of men. Verse 9. For he satisfies the longing soul and fills the hungry soul with goodness. You know, oftentimes I think of David. I, I love the Psalms. I love how David was so hungry for God. And he was so... Uh, so uplifting all the time, even in those dark places. And David teaches us to praise God anyway and thank God anyway. Look at verse 10. Those who sat in darkness in the shadow of death in affliction and irons. In other words, they were bound. They were bound up. They were bound up. But how many know God set them free? Verse 10 it tells us that, again, that we, he brings us out of darkness. And those who call upon him in the midst of a dark time, he will intervene for us. How many know God always makes a way? And just in case you don't think that, I'm going to reiterate and say he does. God always makes a way, whatever needs that we have. I don't know what you have need of tonight, but I believe you're going to go to a new level. We just need to get on one of these roads. Amen? That turnaround. We just need to stay on one of these roads, whether it's thanksgiving or it's praise. Those two work all the time. And then speak the Word of God out of your mouth. How many know that'll work too? That'll bring victory every time. Defeat the devil every time. Hallelujah. Uh, look at verse 11. Because they rebelled against the words of God and despised the counsel of the Most High. They were brought down with their heart with labor. They fell down and there was none to help. Boy, that's a bad situation right there. No help anywhere. No, no one to help. But finally they turned to God, didn't they? Look at verse 13. They cried out in the wilderness in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. Verse 14. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and broke their chains in pieces. And let me tell you what the Lord did. He broke their chains to pieces. Anybody in this place tonight that God has broken the chains off of you and now you're free? Does anybody know what it is? Does anybody know what... 
what it is to come through the valley and be on the other side of it? Does anybody know what it is to go through a dark time and God brought you through? Does anybody know what it is like is to be healed by God? Does anybody know what it's like to be discouraged and come to church and the Lord lifts you up and you came in one way and you left out another? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what church should be like. And that's what this church is like. You come in one way, you leave out another. Hallelujah. Amen. But how many know when we come in and we've been thanking the Lord, we come in and we've been praising the Lord already. We've been quoting, we've been let the redeemed of the Lord say so. We've been speaking that already. Did you know what? We add to the atmosphere. We make the, many times we make the atmosphere what it is. You with me? I love up on the screen it says protecting the atmosphere. I love that. We need to protect the atmosphere because the Holy Spirit is here. And how many know the Holy Spirit is a person? And He is a person. He wants response. And when we respond to Him by our praising Jesus, He responds to us. And I don't know about you, but I like response. Oh, glory. I like, go ahead and give the Lord a big praise. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So in this psalm, we already have read that uh, here's what the Lord's done. He gave them peace and purpose again. He repealed their sentence of death. He freed the prisoners. He broke their chains in pieces. Now they really know what it is to walk in freedom and victory. Amen. Friend, when people see us and we're free, you know what? People in the world aren't free. They're not free. They're bound up. And when they see us and we're happy and we're smiling, they want to know what's up, what's up with you. Let me tell you what God has done. Let me tell you what the Lord's doing. Let me tell you what's going on at my church. Let me tell you what's going on, what God is doing. Revival spirit is here. You want revival? Come on. You want revival? How many are hungry for revival? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know if you're hungry enough. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're getting there, aren't we? You're getting there. You're getting there. Hallelujah. I, I love. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I want to go back one, okay? Can I do that? All right. Thank you. How many, I want to go back to hunger for just a moment. I remember back in 1996, a friend of ours who pastored in a neighboring city, he, said, he calls me up and he says, Brother Terry, he said, we are going to charter a bus and go to Brownsville Revival. Would you like to go? And I said, absolutely, I'd like to go. And so we uh, filled that bus up. And I, I mean, it was packed out. We went all the way to, uh, and this is from Oklahoma. It's from actually Holdenville, Oklahoma, which was a two bus driver ride. Uh, anyway, we got there, rode, drove all night. They drove all night. We got there at eight o'clock in the morning. And he says, I'm going to drive by the church and show, show you where it is. 8 a.m. in the morning. And there was a line from the front door all the way across the street. And I said right there as a pastor, I said, Lord, I can go home right now. And I've been blessed because I've seen people stand in line to get to church. Hunger, hunger. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm telling you, that blessed me. I, I, every time I think about it, that's years ago, and every time I think about that, people standing in line for church. And, of course, there was people, uh, no criticism here, there was people on the bus that wanted to go to the mall. My wife and I said, we want to go get in line. We want to go get in line. Hallelujah. And I'm going to tell you what, it was powerful. And, and I had been, we had gone there like 12 or 14 times to the Brownsville Revival. And then in between, uh, I think it was 2000 uh, or 1998, we moved to Ocean Springs and began to pastor there. And so we kept on going to Brownsville. And I'm telling you, revival is transferable. Yeah. The anointing is transferable. Come on. 
How many know God's no respecter of person? What God has done in someone else's life, he can do in yours. What God has done in another family, he can do in your family. What God has done in one church, he can do in this one. He will do in this one. Amen. And we, we would go to uh, Brownsville and come back, and it was like, wow, Lord. I, we started having services for three and four hours because people would come. People started coming from other churches. Their church would, clo- would be over. They'd come to our church for prayer. I said, send them on, Lord. On. And we'd, sit, we'd have an uh, hour and a half of worship and then an hour and a half, two hours in the altar. Hungry and thirsty. Hungry and thirsty. How many know hunger makes all the difference? Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Look at verse 20. Let's drop down to verse 20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them out of their destructions. And then he says again, Oh, that men would praise the Lord or give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Number five, the fifth road that leads to victory is declare his works with rejoicing. When we lose our rejoicing, we've lost a whole lot, church. But how many know declaring what God has done will remind you of what he's done in the past? It'll encourage you for right now. What you know and what you've seen God to do, it'll encourage you right now. In fact, it'll encourage you when you declare his works, it will encourage you that he's about to do something in your life. Because you say, hey, Lord, I know you've done it before. How many know you can, he can do it again? Hallelujah. How many believe that, that God wants to send a revival to America? He wants to send revival to uh, Mississippi. Oh, he, he does. He wants to send revival here. But how many know we have our part? And when we give thanks and we proclaim his word, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, and we're hungry and thirsty and we praise the Lord anyway, you know what? God's called you and I to thank God anyway. He's called us to praise God anyway. Amen? Paul, amen? Paul, said, Paul said, give thanks not for everything, but in everything. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. So declare his works with rejoicing means to declare or proclaim. How how many are proclaiming what God has done in your life? Now, how many are, I know you can do that, but how many are proclaiming what you want to see God do in the future? Amen. I'm talking about past, present, and future. Amen. Past, present, or past, present, and future. How many know we can do that? We can proclaim it. As I said earlier, what we proclaim it will become part of us. I believe that. Amen. Because God's promises when, will, become part, will become part of the, His promises. Amen. You believe that? Amen. As I said earlier, the Word of God becomes part of you, and then you become part of it. Yes. So when you proclaim it, oh, come on. You're, you're getting a head start. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, let's look at, uh, I'm hurrying. God is going to take care of us no matter what, isn't he? And the victory will come. It always does. It always will. He, God wants us to walk above and not beneath. He wants us to walk above. He don't want us to be all stressed out and, and worried about things. He wants us to be, have victory and have peace. Amen? And oftentimes, I, I have said, Lord, where there is turmoil, I speak peace. Where there is stress, I speak peace. How many know we need that, church? We need that. Look at Deuteronomy 20 and verse 3. And he shall say to them, Hear, O Israel, today you are on the verge of battle with your enemies. You ever been there? Okay, a couple of us. It must be a pastor thing. (laughs) Glory. (laughs) Hallelujah. He, then he goes on to say, do not let your heart faint. Do not be afraid. Do not tremble or be terrified because of them. Verse 4, for the Lord your God, he who goes with you. 
How many are glad God goes with you? Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. God goes with you. And then it goes on to say to fight for you against your enemies. And the word to save you, those words there, it means to help you get the victory. God is going to help you get the victory. How many believe that? He, he wants us to walk in that victory. <clears throat> and very quickly, glory. As I said, to save you, it can, it can be changed to help you get the victory. And I don't know about you, but that's exciting. Because there's been a few times that I've been, I don't know about you, I'm just being honest. It is like I've been knocked off of those roads. It's like, Lord, I'm trying, I'm crawling, I'm, I'm putting forth an effort. I, f I, don't even, I don't even feel like I have a praise on the inside of me. I don't even feel like I have, I have anything to be thankful for. And then all of a sudden, the Lord be, would begin to remind me of where he bought me from and the time that I committed my life to him. And I said, Lord, I'm going to serve you anyway. I'm going to trust you anyway. I'm going to believe you anyway. Lord, where you brought me from, and that encourages me that I do have something to praise you for. I do have something to be thankful for. Hallelujah. You have much to be thankful for tonight. You have so much to praise God for. Hallelujah. How many can say tonight that God's brought me through a whole lot? God's brought me through some things. I have plenty to praise God for. Amen. I have plenty to be excited about. Hallelujah. He is such a good God. Aren't you glad for him? All right. One, one more scripture. Well, no, maybe not. Look at Mark, Mark 39, or Mark 1, 39 to 42 familiar scripture. This is the New Testament step to victory. And he was preaching in their synagogues throughout Galilee and casting out demons. Glory. Yeah. Verse 40. Now a leper came to him, employing him, kneeling down to him and saying to him, if you are willing, you can make me clean. And how many know God was willing. Jesus was willing, wasn't he? Verse 41, Then Jesus moved with compassion, stretched out his hand, and touched him and said to him, I am willing, be cleansed. As soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy left him and he was cleansed. Hallelujah. Immediately. How many, how many believe God's still in the suddenlies? How I many know oh, sometimes God is, just because it hasn't happened doesn't mean it's not. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Just because it hasn't happened, I'm going to say that again. Just because it hasn't happened doesn't mean it's not. And just because he hasn't answered that prayer and it's been a while doesn't mean it's not going to happen or he's not going to answer it. Just because it hasn't happened, it doesn't mean that God's not moving, friend. Amen. I don't know about you, but in fact, I'll, I'll go back to Brownsville for just a moment. I, I left there. I'm, the church service was awesome. I mean, the people roared. I mean, it, the worship was wonderful. It was, I mean, it was just awesome. That's all I can say. It was awesome. Did you know what? I stood there as a pastor, and I didn't feel a thing. I did not feel a thing. I'm not trying to figure out the Holy Ghost. I just trust Him. I just trust Him. Got on the bus, went back to Ch Holdenville Sunday morning. In fact, uh, Sunday morning I got up early and I was sitting in my chair and I was praying and, and uh, I sensed the presence of God. And I hadn't in a you know, it just seemed like the Lord was so far. I mean, how can you be in such a revival and feel like you're so dry? Well, that's where I was. Well, when I stood behind the, the pulpit that Sunday morning, the power of God fell like never before. <clears throat> and I said, thank you, Lord. I kept my faith. <laughs> Hallelujah. <clears throat> and I couldn't get the people to go home. They wanted to stay at late in the afternoon in church. How many know when God shows up, that's what people want? They'll stay. They'll linger. They'll, amen? 
Hallelujah. So the leper's response to Jesus, he responded in four ways. How many, as I said earlier, the Holy Spirit wants our response, doesn't he? Number one, he reached out to him. Are you reaching out to the Lord? Number two, he requested of him. How many have requested something of the Lord? You're believing for something out of the ordinary. How many know when the Holy Spirit shows up, you go from the ordinary to the extraordinary? Right? From the natural to the supernatural. So number two, he requested of him. Number three, he recognized Jesus for who he was. Amen? We honor Jesus, don't we? We honor him. And then number four, this is my favorite. The leper regarded it as it was already done. When you start acting like it's already done, pastor will have to tell you to sit down and let me preach. When we start acting like it's already done, are you, here, are you hearing me? He believed it was already done. How many know the centurion that went to Jesus? He said, speak the word, my servant will be healed. How many believe he was, he was, already, he was already believing that before it happened? How many know that's what, that's what it's all about? Yeah. And how many, by the way, uh, the way I meant to say this, uh, after Brownsville, when I got back to the church and the Lord says to me after that morning service, he says, you know, it's, he didn't say, you know, he said, it's not about feeling. It's about faith. And so every time after that I went to Brownsville, I'm telling you, I got drunk in the Holy Ghost so many times. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Glory. Don't allow emotions to keep you from where God wants to take you. Amen. Don't, don't, let's not allow how we feel to keep us from what God has for us. Because as I said, it's not about feelings. It's about faith. Hallelujah. Let's get in the habit of praising God and get in the habit of, of those five things and how many know they'll always lead to victory. To, to believe is to be strong. To doubt cramps your energy. Doubt brings discouragement, but belief brings power. How many are thankful for that power tonight? Hallelujah. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. He requested of him. He reached out to him. He requested of him. He recognized him. And then the fourth is he regarded it as done. You make me clean, Lord. He regarded it as done. We as Christians, many uh, must believe, or we must believe that Jesus can do anything. All things are possible to them that believe. No matter how tough it gets, how many know God will make a way? Hallelujah. Many times we lay our burdens down at the altar, and before we go sit down, we pick them back up and take them to the seats. And then we have that heaviness all over again the next week. And it's not God's will for you to carry that, friend. It is not God's will for us to walk under that, that worry and that stress he wants us to walk in victory. 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 Again, those five roads that lead to victory. Number one, give thanks. Number two, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Number three, hungry and thirsty. Number, five, number four, praise the Lord. Amen. Number five, declare his works with rejoicing. And as I said, I believe all of these ought to be done by faith. Because we give thanks anyway, we praise the Lord anyway, we say so anyway. We're hungry anyway, and we declare his works anyway. Amen. Hey, hallelujah. Give the Lord a big praise. <clears throat> hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And if we want to go to a new level, we have to praise him anyway. We have to be hungry anyway. If we want to go to a new level, how many know when your hunger goes to a new level, so will you. When your hunger goes to a new level, you follow it. Amen? When your praising goes to a new level, you go with it. 
glory. Oh, I'm getting ready to preach in here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love this. Charles Wesley was near death. While in pain, he attempted to speak with all of his might. And when he spoke, he was just speaking at a whisper. They, could, they couldn't hardly understand or hear what he was saying. And finally, he shouted, which could be still heard faintly. The best of all is God is with us. Again, with a radiant glow about his face, he lifted up his hand in victory. And he said, the best of all, God is with us. Hallelujah. I said, the best, the best thing of all is God is with us. Amen. And he is not going to leave you where you are. He doesn't want us to walk in defeat. He doesn't want us to be oppressed or beaten down by the devil. He wants us to walk in victory in the power of the Holy Spirit and the anointing of God upon our lives. He wants us to, to experience that. He wants us to have revival. Friend, revival spirit is in the house. And I, I want to proclaim to you, it's increasing. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Uh, when we first walked in, I thought, Lord, revival spirits here. I like it already. <laughs> Hallelujah. How many are ready? How many say, I'm ready, I'm ready. Holy Spirit, have your way in my life. Holy Spirit. If you're here tonight and you would say, Brother Terry, I have been on, I have been taken off those roads at a few times in my life. And I have been in a place where I have been up and down spiritually, and I'm tired of it. I want to get on those roads of praise. I want to get on those, that road of thanksgiving. I'm tired of this roller coaster ride. I'm tired of being down. I'm tired of the fight. I'm tired of the disappointments. You know what? Sometimes we, we, we can go from disappointment to disappointment. There's some of you tonight, you've gone from disappointment to disappointment. But God wants you to go from glory to glory. God wants you to go from glory to glory. He wants you to experience His presence. And if there's the second part of that is, so if you're tired of being on that roller coaster ride, I want, we want you to come and we're going to pray for you. And then the second part of that is, is if you're hungry, you're so hungry that you're craving for God, you need to meet us up front. I think that should cover it. How many would say, I'm, I am ready to respond to the Holy Spirit? I am ready to respond to the Holy Spirit? Thank you, Jesus. We are so glad you joined us this morning for this service. We hope that God did incredible things in your life, and we are praying that God will continue to do great things in your life. Look, subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Facebook, and you can see what's going on here at Destiny Church. But most of all, continue to connect and be personal in relationship with Jesus Christ. We love you. God bless you. We hope to see you online again.